All right, it's time for another Starbase summary. I've got my breakfast taco and a microphone, so let's catch up with what SpaceX has been doing out at Starbase. Kicking it off with a little bit of chopstick testing here. You can see the chopsticks swinging around. Of course, you see the ship there on the side. Those lights are pretty bright, pointed towards the camera here. A little foggy, misty, hazy out there as well, but I uh, want to be able to see what you're doing. Back at the production site, the booster stand is moving into Mega Bay 1. See the SPMT scooting it around there. And that looks like a Booster 16 locks tank section. The little stack of rings in the background there. Scooting around the uh, grand thoroughfare between all of the high bays there. And a water tank. The little one's the water tank. The big one's the rocket tank. Let's see what we have over in... That's going to be a mega bay. Booster 13 being lifted onto a stand there. And then jumping back to the launch site. Looks like it's more of those CC8800-1 parts leaving as they continue to disassemble and transport. Look how big... Do you see the tiny toy truck, right, that they just put that big segment on? <laughs> it's like, how big is that yellow segment really? And then you see the tiny little truck. Uh, actually, a huge truck. Watch the flaps on this one. That load spreader's in the way on that one shot, but you can see this flaps going through some flap testing. Hadn't been stacked up yet. Booster 13 scooting around a little bit here. Coming outside of the Mega Bay. See how they have the uh, flaps? Actually, the grid fins, sorry, not the flaps. At a little bit of an angle there to give them a little bit more clearance coming out. But here, that gets us all the way to the rollout of Booster 13. Why are they rolling it out? Well, because as of right now, the launch Flight 6 of Starship is no earlier than Tuesday. Slipped today from the last information. Uh, if you might have known, they were targeting Monday. And it looked like the weather was just not lining up for a good day to launch. And so they've officially moved that as of last evening to target Tuesday. Let's get the uh, light truck here, giving us some fantastic lighting. One of our remote automated cameras here. The SBL Ops giving us a little bit of a trek. Got the spotters walking around as always. Teeny bit of an enhance. All of the uh, underglow on the wheels in the transport stand for the booster. That by this time, uh, not by this time, Tuesday, a little bit later in the day on Tuesday, may be flying and caught back again. Little changes sort of going on there. It's going to be a little bit of a wide shot, but uh, we're going to be doing, we've been preparing some videos, and while we're doing the main streams, we're doing the same format as, less, as last time, we're going to have a stakeout stream, like the run-up, super laid back, hanging it out with uh, space nerds and other enthusiasts, just talking about what's going on early in the morning, and then we're going to kick off the main event, a big main stream, covering that Flight 6 attempt, hoping we get to see that thing go on Tuesday. But that is the plan. You know what to do. Make sure you can get back to the channel here if you want to hang out with us in both the stakeout and the main event stream on Tuesday. It's November 19th is going to be Tuesday if you're watching this uh, in the future, which would be the past. Which the future. Anyways, you get it. It's still amazing that we roll these things down the road like this. Just the public street, the world's largest rocket, most powerful rocket, loudest rocket too, if you caught up with us on the Flame Trench yesterday, we had those fantastic guests from uh, BYU Acoustics who did all of the scientific data gathering on Flight 5, and they reviewed that with us live yesterday. We just sat down and we looked through their graphs and their data and talked about, uh, what was it? A Starship launch is like four SLS launches in acoustic energy output and other interesting facts like that. Like the fact that it's uh, about as loud as a rock concert if you're over at Isla Blanca or uh, Port Isabel. But a lot of cool information on that. Maybe we'll put up a little pop-up card or something if you want to go check out that interview with the folks from BYU Acoustics. But here is the booster making it all the way over, getting situated in between the chopsticks. Just lining it up. Chopsticks closing around the booster, attaching to those lifting pins up at the top. Just a little up, a little down, a little up, a little bit more up, 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 up. They're going to go together. You can actually see things moving a little bit there. But here we get into the lift time lapses. 
That's Tower 2 on the left-hand side. Tower 1 was on the right-hand side there. Chopsticks got a firm grasp on the booster. Picking it up. We're going to see it clear not only the OLM, but the scaffolding. Notice that that scaffolding, as of this shot, is still there on top of the OLM. And we'll pivot. We'll swing that booster over. And then put it down into the OLM. Wow! So that's definitely sped up. That was not real time. But there you have it. You see the chopsticks release the booster. This is going to be a shot from our river site. And go back down. They still have work to do. Ship needs to be stacked on top of it next. Watch the booster. Dick, oh wow, the booster quick disconnect there. The little face hugger thing around the side. It was a little difficult to see. You may have to, to uh, scroll back a little bit to see that one. Chopstick landing rails are the parts on top of the chopsticks. Ship 31 being rolled over with the SBMTs in between the chopsticks. Take it all situated. Here's Jack. Oh, it's the moon. Look, you got the Boca Chica Air Force flying through and then the moon in the background. This looks like a shot of opportunity. That looks like it's handheld, right? So we had a little bit of a uh, character to the shot. And there's the X, the SpaceX logo being lit up. I guess they were testing it, like flip it on, flip it off. Look, SpaceX. We installed the SpaceX logo so that you could turn the SpaceX logo on and off. Not so that you could show SpaceX logo raves. Nobody's going to understand that reference. If you got that reference, please help me out down in the comments. <laughs> See some uh, UFOs flying around checking out the ship being lifted. It's only a UFO if you can't identify it. It's a drone. Once you identify it, it's no longer an unidentified object. It's a IFO, identified flying object. It's just a drone. Wow! Okay, that's rough, but that is some rough lighting conditions on that one. <laughs> it's a drone spotlight moving around. See the alignment. The amount of precision that the chopsticks can move that massive ship with is absolutely crazy. There's the drone. See it inspecting all the clearances and stuff like that. Aha! We've moved it back a little bit, and here we've got Jack with a real camera. This isn't one of the 24-7 cameras that's been exposed to the beach, salt, air, sand environment forever. And uh, has that really tough sensor. This is Jack's nice camera catching the lift of the ship. Ah, yes. And nose cones in the Star Factory. Uh, I think the winning label here was a nose conocopia from the Thanksgiving theme request in the last video. I d I did multiple people came through with some variant of nose conocopia as the uh, Thanksgiving theme. But I appreciate y'all, as always, helping me out with some interesting commentary and descriptions of what's going on. Peek it inside the door of the Star Factory here. And I see a lift. Is that the is that the bottom of a booster back there? That, with all the little connections on the side, that looks like the booster parts. You can see there's a tank in the foreground. There's some different barrels. Look at that in the back, though. You can see all the way back there. There we have the face hugger, hugger unface hugging. That's the ship quick disconnect. Of course, you use that to pipe all the propellants in and out of the ship, but you don't want it connected when you lift off. So that retracts and protects itself and lets the starship go. I like this. Just on the other side of the no trespassing sign. <laughs> the sign looks a little bit uh, newer. They need to go out there and replace them on occasion. But if you are visiting Starbase, please make sure you observe those signs and stay off of the SpaceX property. You can still get tons of cool shots, and you can get closer to the world's most powerful rocket than you've probably been able to get to any rocket that's about to launch, at least for the public, uh, even staying well outside of those no trespassing private property signs. So Max with the gratuitous pan down. Love the battle damage on the tower there, right? You can see that that tower has been through some launches. Yeah, they coat it, they, re they repaint it, they scrape it down, they grind it, they add new pieces, but it is getting some wear and tear. Watch the grid fins on the booster. Bottom middle of the screen, bottom middle-ish right of the screen. Doing a little bit of going through the motions. Just stretching, doing their calisthenics before the uh, big flight on Tuesday. 
making sure the range is all clear. There's nothing there that's going to make them bind up. And that label says that we've got these going 5x speed for this one. That label just popped up. Very cool the amount of uh, control authority they get from these things. Look at this. Oh, the geometric pattern of the way that the grid fin points and holes all come together as the light hits them differently. That's really cool. Tile's looking good on the ship, too. It's just a really nice shot here. Max, thank you for rolling out and catching this one. Looking up on the top of the ship now. Got the chopsticks. There's the aft flaps. Got some camera bumps in there. Some detail on the ship disc quick what, ship disc quick connect, quick disconnect. And of course, you can't get through a video without saying that the OLM work continues. This takes you all the way back to the assembly yard, back past the production site. We think all the major segments of this have been delivered now. And so now they're into the, uh, this, what is this? I asked if we had like Ikea instructions and somebody in the comments said, of course we do. They're called blueprints. Well, I just, show me on the blueprints where it says tab A into slot B. And then like this is screw three and screw three is actually <laughs> 18 millimeters long. Which, which, how long is this screw? I don't know. They seem to know what they're doing though. Ah, a shot of the moon, but I think, yeah. I think we were just watching the moon with one of the 24-7 the cameras, and we just happened to catch that plane transiting the moon there. And then this is coming in hot off the press, or hot off the SD card from Jack. Jack was out super late last night and caught this way better quality footage of work happening on the FTS. I see a bunch of wires in there. That lift was up there for multiple hours, Jack says. Talked to him about it this morning. He said they were up there working for multiple hours, and since they were up there working for hours and hours, Jack was out there for hours and hours to the wee hours of the morning watching what was going on. Couldn't quite get the angle because if you got over more to the right so you could sort of see into that, then the lift would block it some. So uh, the angle we got here sort of side on, just showing how much that lift moves around. Is that like a static drain line or something? A little red coily thing. I wonder if that's to like ground the lift to the vehicle so you don't get static jumps between the people working on the lift and the uh, vehicle itself. In any event, folks, we are rapidly approaching Flight 6. Again, coming up on Tuesday. Make sure you follow and turn on the bell or notifications or whatever if you want to hang out with us for that. My name is John Galloway. Thanks for everybody who recorded the footage out there, and we will see you nerds later.